my task uh, in the next uh, 10 or so minutes um, uh, is, uh, is, is quite simple. Um, and this is really to debunk the myth and, and in the process uh, address the uh, stereotypical views uh, of Africa uh, in terms of health innovation uh, and more specifically our ability to discover, discover drugs or, or medicines uh, using uh, a process that's underpinned by world-class uh, scientific research. So these are the two myths I'm going to address. The first one is around innovation in the area of health. And this is a case of Afro-pessimism, and this is not just Europeans or North Americans thinking that we cannot innovate in Africa. It's also Africans themselves who do not believe that we can innovate and use the power of scientific research to solve our own health problems. And what I will show you is that we can innovate and we can discover drugs in Africa going through a process that's underpinned by world-class scientific research. The second myth is around African medicine. So when you hear the word African medicines, there's often mysticism, sometimes quackery, that springs to mind, to people's minds, when they hear the word African medicine. It's got a negative connotation. It's bad stuff. It's witchcraft. It's juju. Now be careful, juju is also the nickname of the president of the um, <laughs> economic freedom fighters. And I'd like to show you that African medicine is not juju and it's not witchcraft. But before I do so, let me take you through, just very briefly, through the process of how medicines are discovered. And let me say this up front, three things. Number one, it's a very long process. It takes a very long time to be successful in this business. Secondly, it costs a lot of money. And thirdly, there is a value of death along the value chain. Things die and can die at any stage of the process. And this process is very much like the way life is. Before you find a prince, you have to kiss many frogs. And that's exactly what drug discovery is about. And let me explain to you what the process really involves um, at the scientific level. The obvious thing uh, to think about in terms of the value chain, which is going from your left to the right, is obviously, first of all, you identify the disease. That disease, for example, may be cancer, or it may be malaria. And the next question for the scientist is, what has caused the cancer? What has caused malaria? Of course, it's, it's, it's cancer. Generally, we think about normal cells that go crazy. And of course, that leads to a disease and different types of cancers. If it's malaria, we know that the cause of the disease are these malaria parasites. So the first thing that does, after you've identified the disease, at a scientific level, the next step is to think about what exactly makes the cancer cell tick. What makes it possible for this cell to divide, multiply, and go to different parts of the body? What makes it really tick? What is the Achilles heel? If it's a malaria parasite, how does malaria spread? How does it make people sick? Then you think about, in terms of the biology, the underlying biology, we call these things we call targets. So these are basically biological molecules, which if they are validated, if they are genuine targets, if you knock them out or you throw chemicals, which we call medicines or drugs, if they are really important to the survival of the cancer cell or the malaria parasite, then if you block them and you stop them from doing what they do naturally, then the cancer cell must die, or at least regress, or the parasite must die, if it's valid. That's one approach. The second approach is you can simply take a collection of molecules or chemicals and throw them 
at the cancer cells in a laboratory or throw them at malaria parasite and then see what happens. See what happens and see whether you can find chemicals that actually kill the cancer cell or the malaria parasite without caring or bothering to know exactly how they do it. That's the second approach. Irrespective of which approach you take, the next phase is to identify what we call lead molecules. So these are molecules that eventually, once they are tweaked, will become medicines to be given to a patient. So these molecules are, are called lead molecules. They give confidence that you might be able to find um, a drug that might end up on the market. Now, of course, nothing is perfect. Often what happens in reality, you have to tweak, modify the chemical structure of these molecules, and then optimize them to a point where they are now both efficacious, they do what you want them to do, but also they are safe. Safety is the most important thing about a medicine. It must be safe. Once you do that, then you go through a process we call preclinical development. Okay? Um, this is a very long story I can cut short. This might involve, not always the case, involve doing studies in, in animals, or sometimes you don't have to do that, but you focus on safety aspects of a potential medicine. And then if everything goes well, then you go through a process of testing the drug in human subjects. And if that goes well as well, then hopefully you have a drug that's given to, to patients. So that, in a nutshell, is the process of discovering a medicine. So what I'll show you on the one slide is work that's taken uh, a number of years, probably five or so years now, of how we took one approach, which I'll describe on this slide. The bottom line message on this slide is that we took 35,000 individual molecules or chemicals that when we threw at the malaria parasites and simply focused on those chemicals that selectively killed the malaria parasite without harming normal cells. What we then did is then move through a process of optimizing those molecules with respect to what we knew were the required properties along the value chain and deliver them to a point where we say, this is a candidate. It's ready for testing in human patients. And this process, in fact, uh, the main breakthrough was actually in 2010. 2010, the year when we hosted the Soccer World Cup. That's exactly when this uh, initial breakthrough uh, was, uh, was discovered. So this drug that I'm describing today um, uh, is potentially a game changer. Potentially, because there's still a long way to go. It's a potential game changer um, for the following reasons. Number one, this drug really has the ability to cure just using a single dose something that none of the products on the market are able to achieve. Secondly, this really has the potential to be used as part of a game-changing single-dose cure for all strains of the malaria parasite. In addition to that, um, this drug is able to block transmission of the parasite back into the mosquito which is extremely significant in terms of the potential to eradicate malaria using drugs. Because then if you wipe out the entire parasite population, then of course there is no chance for the mosquitoes to spread uh, the parasites from one person to, to the next. Now, that is a very significant deal. A single dose cure for malaria is a game changer. But secondly, the impact on eradication is not um, a small fit. If more importantly, at the scientific level, the approach we took here did not require us to understand exactly the mechanism of action. We did not have the target. But that did not stop us from progressing the molecule to a point where it is safe and efficacious to be tested in human subjects. In fact, as I speak to you now, this trial is actually starting uh, at UCT uh, in, during 2014. Now, what is really the big deal here? Okay? Um, in addition to things I've mentioned, and I'd like to emphasize this one more time, this is a potential drug. There is still a way to go. It could fail at any stage. That's why I mentioned to you uh, the thing about drug discovery. However, to come this far is a big deal. Firstly, this was achieved in record time. The typical duration that a typical company would take to come to the point we came to in 2012 
when the announcement was first made, is typically six years, if and only if you're successful. This happened for us in 18 months. Secondly, this has no precedence on this continent for any disease, not just malaria. And thirdly, and finally, I can go on and tell you a long story about this, is that in fact, last year we managed to crack the mechanism. We managed to crack exactly how this molecule works, so we know the target. And this is only the second target in 20 years that is novel to be discovered in the field of malaria. And just to, uh, when I wrap up now, um, let's take the focus away and shift attention away from the molecule. Let's focus on the benefits. And these are summarized here very quickly. First of all, to really make drug discovery, the process of finding a medicine sustainable on this continent, these are absolutely uh, crucial. Firstly, we began to address the historic challenge of translating the basic science knowledge into life-saving medicines. Secondly, we've been able, in the process of getting the job done, been able to really create infrastructure that is now available to use in other disease areas, like cancer, like TB, which never existed before. Thirdly, we've really pioneered, for the first time ever, a new model for successfully prosecuting drug discovery, development, and clinical testing that was never before on this continent. And then, of course, finally, um, research is not a luxury. And I'm living testimony of what I've seen on this project, research creating jobs, creating opportunities, reversing the brain drain. There are critical economic benefits of doing research even before you see the products. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa can innovate, and Africa is a place of innovation. I thank you.